Hey, Scott here, Scotty's Animals. Let's talk about the top 10 guinea pig care fails. Hey, but before we do that, I got an email and I thought I would share it because it really warmed my heart. Adeline writes, I got three guinea pigs 12 weeks from a breeder. <clears throat> they are so scared in the room and they don't come out. I pick them up to pet them. I, I try speaking with them. I don't know what else to do. What can I do? Or are they just too young? In the past, I had guinea pigs, but they were never that scared. Well, as you know, all guinea pigs are individual personalities, and they all have their own backstories. These ones came from breeders, so honestly, you don't know if they were crammed in too small of a space, if they were never socialized, if they were never picked up, or if people ever interacted with them, or if they were just in some bin. I mean, you probably know if you know the breeder a little bit, if you did some research, but... Um, it's the same thing in the rescue world. We never know. Um, so I responded, basically, they want food and they want to feel safe. And I said, you're, if they're in a small cage and you're chasing them around with your hands, then they're going to be scared and run away. I suggested a Midwest or a CNC cage, and I said, always greet them with treats and make whistling noises at them, and they'll come to you out of curiosity. I recommended some videos, the seven reasons why your guinea pig hates you, five ways to make your guinea pigs love you, and how to tame your guinea pig. And there's also links in those videos. So then she wrote back, hey, I messaged you about my three guinea pigs which were scared. I watched your videos and it worked. They're not scared anymore. So uh, <laughs> that was a really nice message to open up. So Adeline, congratulations, and for those of you who are going through the same thing, maybe check out those videos that I suggested. Okay, so now let's go back to it. The top 10 guinea pig care fails. Well, of course, I think the number one guinea pig care fail is that your guinea pig is living alone. In almost every case, your guinea pig can benefit from having a buddy, even if that is just a side-by-side -side buddy where they're interacting through grids. Even if your guinea pig can't get along with others, just having other pigs in the room is going to go a long way for their well-being and their sense of security and also their curiosity. So please consider it. It's really important for them. And in fact, in some countries, it's illegal to keep guinea pigs alone. So number two, your cage is too small. I recommend a minimum of eight square feet per guinea pig or per pair of pigs. Now, guinea pigs shouldn't live alone, but if you've got your guinea pig as a solo pig, you really wanna offer them as much space as you would even if they had a buddy. And so that's a minimum of eight square feet. I love a two by four CNC cage for a pair of pigs, but if you have the space and you have the means, go bigger. It's always better to give them more space so number three in the top 10 guinea pig care fails would be their diet. A lot of people come to the rescue and they're either not giving them enough hay or not giving them the right kind of high quality pellets, okay? It's very important that your guinea pigs are getting 80% Timothy hay. I'm allergic to Timothy hay and I've found that if I just feed the Timothy hay and then I wash my hands and wash my face my allergies are to a minimum. But there are other hays that you can try, like orchard grass, that may be less triggering of your allergies. But it's very important that 80% of their diet is hay. And you can also substitute fresh and dried grasses that you might have around you. But hay is very, very important for their diet. It's very important that your guinea pigs have high quality guinea pig pellets. Let's talk about the fourth guinea pig care fail. Well, just like it's important to have high quality food, clean, fresh water can't be overlooked. It's important to have a good water bottle that gives them enough fresh water, they're not gonna run out during the day, but it's important to change the water, clean the inside of the water bottles, and make sure that it's always fresh and clean. I recommend a water bottle brush. If you go onto my website, Scotty's Animals, I have a link to the specific brush I recommend. It's made by Lixit. You can find it on Amazon, you can find it on Chewy. I have links for both of those sites, so definitely grab a brush. Whether you have a plastic water bottle or a glass water bottle, 
I like the plastic water bottles. I can squeeze them to get rid of, uh, to create a suction so that they don't drip as much. But as long as you're cleaning your water bottle, you can also put it in the dishwasher, plastic or glass, and that will sterilize them. So instead of just manually getting the gunk out, that will actually kill all the bacteria and get them clean. And that's important to do every once in a while. While we're talking about water and water bottles, don't put your vitamin C in the water. Don't use those Vita drops that put the vitamin C in the water. The vitamin C, when it's in the water, loses its potency. It changes the flavor of the water. You can't control how much they're drinking. Nate's down there drinking away. <laughs> He's like, oh, you're talking about water? <sighs> so it's really important that you give them fresh, clean water, not vitamin C drops in the water. You cannot control how much vitamin C you're gonna give them. If you want to give them vitamin C, and I recommend it, either the little vitamin C cookies, Oxbow makes those, uh, there's a couple other brands out there, or I like the Child Life Liquid Vitamin C, and I have a video to that as well. So fresh, clean water, very important. Okay, now let's talk about the fifth guinea pig fail. You're not picking your guinea pigs up enough. You should be picking them up every day interacting with them every day. Oh, they're scared of me when I reach in for them. That's not an excuse for not picking them up. That is just an example of how they will behave when you don't pick them up. I always say at the rescue, guinea pigs don't like to be picked up, but they don't mind or they will enjoy being held. Now, especially if you offer them treats. So what do I mean? The act of trying to pick them up is like reaching for them and grabbing them. They are prey animals, they don't want to be grabbed, they don't want to be reached at. But if you can get them used to you, you are getting them curious of you and you're offering them treats, then they will come to you and you can pick them up and that moment where you're grabbing and picking them up will be minimized and then they will be, they'll feel secure in your arms, you'll be hand, uh, feeding them veggies. So that's the thing, getting them to the place where they feel secure. I recommend a cuddle cup like this. This one's made from Dee Naffy, the sewing fairy. She is in Austria. So check out her website. Um, there's a link to that on her YouTube channel. But even in the States, there's also, you can make this yourself and there's so many great places on Etsy where you can support local creators and, and, and get something that's going to really, here, let's, let's use Mike as a guide. See, and Mike is so tame that I just reach in and he doesn't even know what's happening. So this is a great way to hold your piggies. They won't nibble your fingers and you can feed them treats. You can put a little snack right in here for them. You can put them on your lap and watch them, some, some, uh, more Scotty's Animals videos or LA Guinea Pig Rescue videos. Okay, I'll let him go, put him back there. And it's a great way to pick them up and put them back too, because instead of grabbing them and they're all squirming, they always feel secure with their feet there. But before I forget about the reason, not just to interact with them, it's also important to notice their behavior. Do they look sick? Are they not acting like themselves? Are they hiding in their igloo? Do they feel, look at Mike, he's so cute. He's so cute. I'm just saying they're cute. Are they acting like themselves? If you interact with them every day, then you will get to know their personalities and when they aren't feeling well or not acting like themselves, then you'll notice. And that's very important to catch an illness early and make a vet appointment before they get so sick that you can't do anything. Guinea pigs respond very well to treatment if you catch it early. So it's important to pick them up and interact with them daily. Let's talk about the sixth guinea pig care fail. You're not putting in the effort to tame them, to interact with them, to get to know them, to care about and for them. You need to offer them treats when you approach them and you need to communicate with them. If you're in the other room and you're preparing treats for them, Chop, 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 rinse, 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 crinkle, 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 and then you whistle at them, and you get them excited, and you get them anticipating your arrival, and they won't be afraid of you, and then you will have piggies that interact with you, they trust you, and they love you, and they depend on you. All right, let's talk about the seventh guinea pig care fail. 
You're breeding. Stop breeding. Your guinea pigs shouldn't be having babies, okay? If you have a mixed sexed pair and your guinea pigs are having litter after litter, stop it. Separate them. It's, it's not cool, okay? I don't know where you live, but in Los Angeles, there's so many guinea pigs in the animal shelters that need homes. They need good homes. And there's so many people out there that got into guinea pigs that for whatever reason, they're allergic or they just don't have the time anymore or there's something happened. They have a, a situation in their family that's preventing them from caring for their guinea pigs the best that they can. Those are the pigs you should be looking for and finding. Okay, not supporting breeders who, if you look at this, this message, the, these guinea pigs came scared and people are having a hard time taming them. Now, I think it doesn't matter where your guinea pig came from, what their history is, if they're young or old, if you put in the time, the dedication and the love, and it's not a lot, it's just a little bit of time. And if you love them, you'll do it. It's, this is so much fun. So if you put in that time, you will have amazing piggies but you don't need to go get them from a breeder to get wonderful additions to your family when people come into the rescue and they look at a guinea pig and oh this guinea pig has a little patch of ringworm on their ear or or this guinea pig is scared you know and they're like well do you have any others that are perfect yeah we do but don't you want to rise to the occasion and be the one to pull these pigs out of their shell or to help the rescue cure them of ringworm is like such a trivial thing and to rise to the occasion and step up and care for these guys they're gonna get sick at some point in your life and you're gonna have to be there for them so to think that you're gonna just have perfect pigs right out of the the gate and nothing's gonna go wrong and that if you go to a breeder that's gonna solve all your problems. It won't. In fact, a lot of times the pigs that come from the breeders, that come from the pet stores, they have respiratory infections, they have ringworm, they have mange, their immune systems are compromised. So don't fall for it. Even if it's a reputable breeder, do you think that they are paying attention to every single guinea pig and loving them? And if you are a breeder, you know, don't hate, but ask yourself, could you be fostering and saving and rescuing pigs out there where you live there's no guinea pigs there's such a high demand for guinea pigs and there are none floundering in animal shelters that it's it makes sense to breed well congratulations that's where we hope to get to in los angeles but unfortunately every day people are dumping guinea pigs at the rescue every day people are putting them in garbage cans every day people are posting them on craigslist so, if you're breeding, I don't, <laughs> we're like, you, you'll never convince me. When I was a kid, I had a couple litters with my guinea pigs. We found good homes for them, but I was ignorant to the fact that there's so many that are already looking for good homes. And, and, and why did we do it? For selfish reasons. We wanted to see the babies being born. You know what? There's babies being born at the LA Guinea Pig Rescue all the time. So subscribe to our channel and you'll get to see baby guinea pigs. Come visit us. You don't have to have them on your own and make it harder for us and all those rescue heroes out there. Wow, this one went really long. <laughs> okay, so that's it, moving on. No breeding. <laughs> In my notes for no breeding, it just said, enough said. <laughs> like that's all I was gonna say but instead of course it was this long rant and that's fine that's good that's how I feel um, let me know if you agree with me right, moving on let's talk about the eighth guinea pig care fail you haven't found a vet you're not gonna take your guinea pig to the vet before they are sick you haven't done your research and found a vet near you it's very important that you know in an emergency where you're gonna go to take your piggy before they get sick. At the Los Angeles Guinea Pig Rescue, we have a pamphlet that we give out which lists all the vets in our area that we recommend. But I would say, if you're getting guinea pigs today, if you just got them today, to, uh, reach out, call around, because not all vets will treat guinea pigs. A lot of vets think that guinea pigs are exotic pets, even though right, they're so much like people that they do 
animal testing on them, but when it comes to vets, a lot of vets are clueless. So find a vet that's comfortable, find a vet that is open-minded, find a vet that you trust, and then also subscribe to LA Guinea Pig Rescue Channel. And when you see some symptoms of illness, you will be able to possibly diagnose and you'll be able to present that to a vet that you trust. If there's a vet that you trust and you say, I think my guinea pig has a respiratory infection because of this, this, and this, they're gonna be like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. I highly doubt that. I think they're gonna look and listen. But if you just go in and you say, "There's, I don't know what's wrong, then they're gonna have to do all that legwork. I think that most open-minded vets would appreciate that. And those are the vets you need to find. And please find them before your piggy gets sick. So that's the eighth guinea pig fail. Now let's talk about nine. The ninth guinea pig fail I see a lot is people don't do their research. They don't wanna do their research. For some reason, they think they know it all. Maybe they had guinea pigs as a kid, or maybe they never did, but they're just like, well, how hard could it be? The guy at the pet store told me this. And then the, the five minutes that they spent with the guy at the pet store is like everything that they ever go by. And the pet store employees, a lot of them are really awesome and really care. And I've talked to a lot of them during the comments and during the course of making these videos. But they also, many of them only know or only can recommend the products that they have in the store. And when it comes to cages, they don't have CNC cages. They don't sell the Midwest. The CNC cage, you could build yourself for less than $40. In the Midwest, you can find online for around the same price. But I really recommend get into building your own. It's so much fun. Don't trust the pet stores. Do your research. Reach out to the Los Angeles Guinea Pig Rescue. Connect with us on YouTube, Instagram, uh, Facebook. Reach out to other Facebook groups. There are a bunch of Facebook groups. And connect to more than one. Put your questions to them and become part of this guinea pig community. Okay, so that actually leads me to number 10. If you do your research, then you will connect to this guinea pig community. So the 10th guinea pig care fail is that people are doing it all on their own. You're not alone here. I'm here. Reach out to me. You can message me, Scotty's Animals at Gmail. You can post a comment. I would really, I want you to email me if you would like to email me. But what I'd love to see is if you have a question, post it in the comments. If you read a comment from someone who seems like they know what they're talking about, ask your question as a reply to their comment. Then they'll get a message. Boys, <laughs> right now, males and piggy smalls are rumble strutting around each other. They may, they may get into like a little fight and then they will just take a nap. They are the cutest. Oh, they're sitting side by side like <laughs> purring. God, I love them. And now they sat down. <laughs> but I worry. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, community. Connect with us. There's so many awesome guinea pig channels, so many awesome groups. There's rescues all around the country and all around the world. Just because you don't live in LA doesn't mean you can't follow us. Um, you can't wear a t-shirt. I wore one of these t-shirts in Louisiana and someone came up to me and they're like, why does my guinea pig cage smell? I think I mentioned that before, but you never know what kind of crazy interactions you're going to have. Um, gosh, was it Jamie? I, I got a message. One of my Patreon, one of my patrons was in Maryland in a supermarket wearing a tough as nails shirt and someone came up to them. Oh my gosh, you watch Scotty's animals? I do too. And then they got to have a cool conversation about their guinea pigs. So I would say you've got to connect to other guinea pig people because if you just reach out to me, maybe I'm busy, maybe I'm shooting a video, maybe something's going on, I'm at the vet. I can't always answer, but the bigger your, the bigger your guinea pig community is, the faster of a response you'll have and the more you'll learn before emergencies happen. You know, it's one thing to be able to get concise information in an emergency, but the more plugged in and connected you are with guinea pig people, the more you'll learn and before any of these situations happen. You know, it may not be an emergency. If you plug in to this guinea pig community and you're watching 
the videos and you're reading other people's stories on the guinea pig groups, somebody may post something like, oh my gosh, my guinea pig broke their tooth or my guinea pig, this happened, that happened. And oh, my guinea pig got a hay poke in the eye and their eye popped out. And then you're like, oh my God. But then they posted two days later, it, everything was fine, back to normal. Um, if that happens to you, then you'll be like, okay, I saw this happen before. And you know, maybe you won't freak out. So connect with us, subscribe to the YouTube channels, find your groups and make some friends. And you're gonna find having guinea pigs is a lot of fun. So that was my top 10 guinea pig care fails. Fails! What are your guinea pig care fails? Did I miss one? Let me know in the comments. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.